anomers are the diastereomers that result when an open chain monosaccharide cyclizes to form a hemiacetal. The Greek letters alpha and beta denote the two possible anomeric forms of a monosaccharide. And the alpha and beta nomenclature is best explained in the context of Fischer projections. And so that's what I'd like to do now, is draw Fischer projections of the alpha and beta anomers of glucose to clarify where the terms alpha and beta come from and what the rules are. To draw a Fischer projection for a cyclic monosaccharide, I think it's easiest to start with the vertical carbon backbone. There are five carbons within the ring and a sixth carbon that's part of a hydroxy methyl group. And so there will be five stereogenic carbons in the Fischer projection. So I'm going to go ahead and draw five crosses to represent these five stereogenic carbons. Let's go ahead and put the CH2OH group at the bottom of this Fischer projection as well. Let's avoid thinking about the anomeric and cyclizing carbons for a second and start with these three stereogenic carbons that are part of the ring but just bear hydroxyl groups. We can place the hydroxyl groups using the Fischer projection convention as we've used it before, looking down on the points of the carbon such that the carbon backbone bonds are pointed away from us and the hydroxyl group and hydrogen are pointed towards us. When we do that, we end up with hydroxyl groups in the following positions. And just to clarify where we're looking here, let's number the carbons in the Fischer projection from one to six, and number the corresponding carbons in this cyclic drawing. Now I've deliberately avoided dealing with carbon five at this point, but we can assign the position of the alkoxy oxygen at carbon five one of two ways. We can first of all notice that this is a D-glucose, which means that the hydroxyl group is pointing to the right at carbon five in the Fischer projection, just according to the definition of D. But you can also verify this visually by noting that the hydroxyl group is pointing to the right when we position ourselves in accordance with the Fischer projection convention. So we can go ahead and add that oxygen, which is this oxygen within the ring, in a rightward pointing position at carbon five. To show the cyclization, we draw a curved line from that oxygen up to carbon one. And the last question we have to answer is, in which direction does the hydroxyl group point at carbon one? Well, again, Using the conventions of the Fischer projection, realizing that this cyclizing oxygen should be at the top of our field of vision when we assume the correct viewpoint, the thing we notice is that that hydroxyl group points to the left and the hydrogen points to the right, and this can be a little bit easier to see if we draw the implied axial hydrogen at this carbon as well. So I encourage you to pause the video and verify that this is in fact the true Fischer projection of beta D-glucose. In the meantime, I'm going to repeat the process for alpha D-glucose. So the alpha D-glucose Fischer projection is nearly identical to the beta D-glucose projection, but I'll draw your attention to the key difference. In the alpha D-glucose projection, the hydroxyl group linked to the anomeric carbon points to the right. Let's go ahead and highlight that in the Fischer projection. However, in the projection for the beta anomer at the top, that hydroxyl group linked to the anomeric carbon points to the left. And this is key to the alpha and beta conventions and key to recognizing the difference between anomers and Fischer projection form. They are identical stereochemically at carbons two through five, which are all stereogenic. They have the same configurations at carbons two through five, but different configurations at carbon one. Alpha and beta are all about the relative orientations of the bottommost hydroxyl or alkoxyl oxygen and the newly created hydroxyl group at carbon one within the Fischer projection. In the alpha anomer, let's continue highlighting the alpha in red, the alkoxy or hydroxy oxygen at the bottommost stereocenter at carbon five points in the same direction as the hydroxyl group linked to carbon one, the anomeric hydroxyl. This is the hallmark of the alpha anomer. This defines the alpha anomer that these two groups point in the same direction. In the beta anomer, we see that this oxygen at the bottommost stereocenter and the anomeric hydroxyl point in opposite directions. Now, when these two groups point in opposite directions, we're looking at a beta anomer. So just to summarize, the alpha anomer is characterized by the anomeric hydroxyl and the 
either alkoxy or hydroxyl group connected to the bottommost stereocenter pointing in the same direction, and the beta anomer is characterized by the anomeric hydroxyl and the bottommost alkoxy or hydroxyl oxygen pointing in opposite directions in the Fisher projections. If you look around online or as you're studying for the MCAT or what have you, for alpha and beta conventions, you'll read a lot of stuff about how to assign alpha and beta using these chair forms or even a six-membered flat hexagonal structure for glucopyranose. I'm not going to cover those here because really they're beyond the scope of Chem 2313 and they're really not useful to memorize outside of the context of the MCAT. However, I like to present the conventions here to show you that the way they're defined really has to do with the Fisher projections, not the chair forms or the flat hexagonal forms. If for any reason you need the details of the actual convention, it has to do with the Fisher projection and the orientation of the anomeric hydroxyl relative to, in the case of glucose, the hydroxyl or alkoxyl oxygen at carbon-5.